so today, at A Word on Westerns, we're going to be talking about a film that we all love that we've discussed here before, Sam Peckinpah's Ride the High Country. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the greatest films ever made. Not greatest westerns, one of the greatest films. It has such depth, such beauty. And the leading lady in that film, who made her film debut in Ride the Hot Country, Marriott Hartley, she's here today. Marriott, would you please come up here and join us? So honored to be here, and I was so honored. It was my first film. I, uh, I'd never done I had never done a movie, I'd never done film, I, I knew nothing about it, I knew nothing about film acting, you know. I still don't. Well, um, but no one would know from watching that performance, it's not only oh. were you great in that, but the reviews, for you in particular, were... They were pretty so wonderful. I came to Chorus School to be married, and that's what I'm going to be, married. Marriott Hartley, refreshingly different, with her red hair and freckles, recklessly pitted one suitor against another. Looks like the girl he's been going down the mountain to see. I'll say one thing, she's sure worth the trip. Looks like a warm one. Because that was, that was not an easy role, either. Uh, you well, know, R.G. Armstrong. Oh, my. <laughs> she was pretty powerful. R.G., yeah. Uh, and he was uh, definitely an actor studio actor, and, uh, about which I knew nothing. I came from classical theater. I came from Shakespeare. I've been doing Shakespeare since I was 10. So being roughed up by those guys was um, really terrifying to me. I, I was scared to death most of the time. Uh, it was funny because I, I met Jimmy Drury at, a, at an airport, uh, I don't know, a while back. And I said, you know, I, I, you terrified me, Jimmy. I don't know if you're aware of that, but you and all of the Hammond brothers. And he said, really? And I said, yeah. He said, Oh, I was so in love with you. I said, why the hell didn't you tell me that? I mean, it sure would have made it a lot easier for me. Cause well, I think Warren Oates was in love with you, too, and uh, all oh, of those he? Hammond brothers. Oh, I know? didn't know that either. Anyway, yeah, because Warren and I worked a lot together. Um, was the last thing we did was Barcaro. You no, know, we did also a series uh, based on the African Queen. Yeah, and I have a tendency to swear a lot. Um, and uh, he, he didn't. He was very embarrassed by it, that I would dressed as I was. The marriage sequence, uh, when you first are riding in to meet the Hammond brothers, and then the, the actual wedding that was taking place, there was such a, an authenticity to that that was different for Westerns of that time. I guess you would use the word thank uh, Sam for that. He had such an incredible vision about uh, the piece. But I was going through that kind of thing in my life, and it was the first time I actually was aware of how I could use my life for, the, for that. Mm -hmm. um, I was in, in a marriage that was not particularly friendly. Um, it, was, it was violent. Um, and so being there with those brothers who passed me from, you know, a pair of arms to a pair of arms to a pair of arms, and then the, the terror of the rape that happened, it was so, I can feel it now, I mean, it was so terrifying to me. And I knew that I was going home to that same kind of behavior, and um, uh, <laughs> Jenny Jackson, uh, who played the, the, the head of the, the bar. I don't know if everybody She was remembers. this bigger than life and bigger than life Yes, woman she was. She was made there. her own dresses. And because and, uh, I, pardon the I don't know if you expected this kind of a personal uh, revelation, but um, I, I don't have much of a, a chest. I have, uh, I, have uh, I have shoulder blades, but I don't have, I have myself. <laughs> And, but Jenny had, I, I dressed with her actually. We, we shared a dressing room at one point. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> or like those in my life. And it was like, whoa, wow. And I knew what she did with them because she had her dresses made particularly for the size of her breasts sizes of her breast. And the, I, do you remember, does anybody remember those, those in, the, in the movie? They were, they were triangles, 
right? <laughs> they were satin triangles. And I actually, I mean, it was like, a, uh, it was like some kind of, of, of machine. <laughs> she would lean over and she would actually scoop her breasts into those triangles and then she'd pop up like that. But it was interesting. I mean, I learned a lot. I, I learned a lot. Jenny was married to a guy named Diamond Jim. At least she said she was married to him. And he, he had a place up in Vegas. He was one of those, you know, roulette guys. I didn't even know what the hell the name of those things were. He was walking in front of me, and he said, how are you doing, kid? And I said, uh, and I never told anybody what was going on at home. And he said, are you okay? And I said, not really. I'm, not, I'm going home, and sometimes it isn't really pleasant. And he said, just remember. And now, I had never heard this. I was 21. I'd never heard this. He said, it's, things are darkest before dawn. And I have to tell you that this complete, very sweet stranger uh, saved my life that night. Uh, it, it, was, it was an amazing thing. But to be able to use that part of my life in that scene, and it wasn't just what was happening, it was the feelings that came up as they were happening, take after take after take, and, and, uh, and then and RG, forget about it. I mean, good Lord, when he started, <laughs> When he started slapping me, oh my God. He's I mean, very I'm, intimidating. Yeah, I mean, in Shakespeare, you don't do that. You come out and you say, to be or not to be, and that's it, right? But in this movie, uh, something ahead. that yeah. Shakespeare didn't have, he had two of the greatest heroes, Randolph Scott and Joel McRae, to protect you. So was that comforting? Was that Gosh, exciting no. for you? Did, were you aware of, uh, of their status in the business at the time? I knew nothing about them. Wow. I, ca I came from, from Westport, Connecticut. We had one um, movie house, the Fine Arts Theater in Westport. I, I watched things like uh, The Red Shoes. <laughs> and uh, that's, she was the only person I ever wanted to be. It was Maura Shearer. And making the outstanding debut of this or any other year, a lovely red-headed girl graced with all the talents my mother, I remember, bought me some red shoes when I was doing ballet. It didn't help at all. Remember what happened to Maura Shearer in the red shoes, wearing the red shoes? I don't think my mother took it quite to that place. But anyway, <laughs> I never jumped off of any balcony. But um, no, I knew nothing about Westerns. I mean, I really didn't. And I, have, I am so in love with them now. My, my dad, as I think you know, uh, soon after uh, the movie uh, took his life, and, and, and he did it with a gun. So I now am doing nothing but Westerns for the next five years. Knew nothing about post-traumatic stress syndrome, and I am hearing guns all the time. <laughs> And I'm ending up in fetal positions in these fake um, uh, houses, these cottages that, ha that has no back but has a front and, and corners. And, uh, and I got through what I had to get through with all of these kind of guys that were there. What, what was the breakthrough for you feeling with, with that emotional stress? What was the moment that you said, I can get past this? I can get past the, the gun, the, the, the fetal position, the, the, the intensity that I'm living with, and to, to embrace life. Uh, it took me a long time. I mean, my mission, should I choose to accept it, was to live. <laughs> was to live. Uh, I didn't have a lot of life around me. Uh, and uh, I just kept working and working and working and putting one foot in front of another, one foot in front of another. And suddenly, I mean, finally, it all kind of, and I was in therapy. I know there are a lot of cowboys out here that don't, probably don't believe in therapy, but... <laughs> they use guns instead. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm one of those southern bells that uh, <laughs> learned a lot about therapy. Uh, and I, I really had to learn a lot about myself. Uh, but I remember, I was terrified doing Ride the Country. But the, in the middle of Ride the High Country, I knew, mostly probably because of, of Joel and Randy, that this was a very special film. I had never seen The Westerner. I have since met, had met uh, Brian Keith and adored him. And then when I saw it for the first time with my father, 
beside me and it said, in introducing Mary at Hartley, oh, I can still feel it. And he put his, his hand on my, my arm and he said, well, kiddo, you did it. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a very, very special moment. So my life has always been connected somehow to some work that I'm doing so that I can actually use whatever it is that's happening in my life. It, I can really, it can become creative. And that was really an incredible awareness for me.